The Simpleton's Guide! Hi, I'm Professor Scammington, and this is The Simpleton's Guide, because simple is better. Today we're going to be talking about a topic that's all over the news these days, the alternative energy source known as ethanol. Ethanol is a fuel additive that can be made from lots of different kinds of plants. Now, the kind that's produced in the United States is mostly made from corn. Once it's created, it's mixed with gasoline to produce a fuel that burns cleaner than gasoline alone. For years, people who worry about air pollution and reliance on foreign oil have recommended that consumers in the United States use more ethanol. As often happens in politics, though, these recommendations have meant that the government has been using regulations and tax money to force people to use as much ethanol as possible. As it turns out, however, there are some significant downsides to using ever larger amounts of ethanol to replace gasoline. In order to get that corn to make into ethanol, it requires plowing under greater amounts of farmland that might go undeveloped as forest land. And the growing process itself uses additional energy resources that are needed to water, fertilize, and harvest the crops. It also drives up the cost of the rest of the corn that's used as food, which impacts both everyday consumers who buy things like cornflakes, and people like ranchers who use corn to feed their livestock. While many Americans can afford those higher prices, the impact is much more dramatic in poorer countries. In Mexico, for example, corn is a major part of the local diet, especially among the poor citizens. And already, increased demand for ethanol in the United States has led to skyrocketing corn prices in Mexico. It's gone so far that some local officials consider this to be a food supply crisis. So here's what we're left with. Ethanol can help produce a slightly cleaner burning version of gasoline, and it can replace some fossil fuel use. However, that comes at the cost of billions of dollars in taxpayer subsidies, pressure to plow under forest and other undeveloped land, greater fertilizer and pesticide use, higher cost to consumers, and more importantly, potentially dangerous threat to food security of poor people all around the world. Professor Scammington's suggestion? Make ethanol available to anyone who wants to buy it, but don't force taxpayers to subsidize it. Now, if people want to pay a premium for green fuel, let them. But don't pass laws forcing everyone to support a so-called clean fuel that has some pretty dirty side effects. This has been The Simpleton's Guide.